Father, as we come to your throne of grace at this time, Lord, we come in your name. We come, Lord, because we have not thanked you enough for the past six days that thou gavest unto us. You have blessed us, Lord. You have cared for us and you have carried us through the water, the fire, and the flood. And now, Lord, we enter your Sabbath day of rest. We ask for that blessing that we so stand in the need of, Lord. May your Holy Spirit be felt among us today to bless us again and again and again. In Jesus' precious name, we await you. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for the opening hymn, hymn number 334, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Oh, to grace, oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a better, bind me closer still to thee. Oh, to wonder, Lord, I feel it, oh, to I'm tired, options are few, I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused, I can't fake what's left. Truth is I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die, mm -hmm. one touch will change my life take me to the king i don't have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces it's my offering lay me at the throne leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory Sing to you this song. Please take me to the king. Truth is, it's time to stop playing these games. We need a word for the people's pain. So, Lord, speak. Spread with 
a story to share with you today. But before I do, I just need to stand still and pray. So let us pray, please. Father in heaven, once more, Lord, I approach the seat of mercy. Father, we are indeed standing in the midst of prayer. For grace and mercy, O oh Father, we have more than enough room to accept that. So, Lord, as I come to you now, Lord, may you guide my lips, take my thoughts, and let it be yours. Let whatever comes from these lips of mine, Father, that they will be from you to your people. And I pray today, Lord, that someone within the t ringing or the tone of my voice, Father, that the heart may be blessed, that someone will be here listening keenly to what I have to bring to the congregation. Hear my prayer, Father controlled me today, I pray, Father, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, this is what I have to share with you. It's like for months, I've been struggling with this story that I read. And it brings to my mind so many things that I question myself at times, but then too much questions and no answer. So I just come right back to the point and say this story is speaking to me. Our topic today, or my topic today, it's not a coincidence. The story goes like this. There was this student who was going around 
selling books to survive, to further herself in the ministry by getting a couple of extra dollars. I guess most of us here knows what that is or what it is like. I think it's called called Porte. And this young lady, she's been working very hard and diligently to make her sales. So one of these lovely rainy days she went out and on her way going towards one of the homes in the village, she met a lady. She introduces herself and she told her what her business was all about. And the first reaction that came from the lady was, it's not a coincidence. She said in her, in her interview or in her writing, what is not a coincidence? And the lady repeated with a louder voice, it's not a coincidence. She said that she raised her brow, dropped her head, and wondering what's wrong with this woman. The woman keep on shouting, it is not a coincidence, it's not a coincidence. She said she sort of felt a bit coward, but she kept on with her approach and what she's all about. She mentioned to the lady that, um, can I go inside with you? She accepted. They went in and the conversation started again. Then she told the lady that she has books for sale and whatever the price is, she said she did not have that kind of money to buy any books, but it's not a coincidence. What is not a coincidence to her? That woman, that young lady was very brave. She did not give up. She wanted to hear from the lady what is not a coincidence. Then she told her the topics of the books that she had for sale and asked the lady to choose which one she wanted. And she looked at her and she said, she gave her the chance to pick the book. And the book that she picked is entitled, Peace Above the Storm. And the student asked her, why did she pick that book? She said, it is not a coincidence. So here, I'm asking myself, I'm not judging. Was that lady burdened down? Was she going through a difficult time? What was the problem with her? I don't think the student was able to recognize what her problem is. Maybe I would say, well, this lady's gone off her rockers. But that was not it. When I sum it all up, this lady was waiting. She was anxiously and desperately waiting for someone to come around to talk to her, just to share a few words with her, or to give her a book that she can read on her own time. So she kept on going around about four times within the time of the student's visit. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. Because each time she gets louder and louder. And the student said she was wondering if the lady is okay. And she left her with the books and told her that she will come back. She said she had long to know what was wrong with that lady. What was the coincidence in her life? 
or what was it she was waiting on. And there I came along, maybe to fulfill whatever the lady was needing, whatever it is. It was not a coincidence. God, I sent her purposely to meet with that woman. That's my belief. And there she arrived there at the lady's house. And it was not a coincidence because it seems as if she was waiting for a mighty long time to meet someone. So, when I read that story, I said, my God, I have to share this on Women's Ministry Day in Westmount because there are a lot of women in our church, or churches, but particularly my church. And I know most times they're called upon to do something or they're asked to go somewhere or you're looking for them to participate into something. But they keep on declining. Why? You should not be afraid. Because wherever God leads you and where he sends you, he's going to be there too. He promises he will not leave you nor forsake you. And he promised that he will give you the know-how. So, here I am, women's ministry leaders for Westmount. Is it a coincidence that I was nominated to be the women's ministry leader? I don't know. I don't know. But it's never a coincidence whenever you see something that needs your help or your input and you don't put in. Okay? It is not a coincidence when you go to your fellow sister's house and you said, oh, I'm going to help you to fold the laundry. I'm going to cook a meal here today. I'm going to do something. Or when you go to a senior's for a visit and you see, oh, that senior's home look little bit raggedy. It's not a coincidence for you to ask for the mop, for the broom, and you just get down and clean. It's not a coincidence for you to go to the supermarket and bring in an extra bag of diapers for a mother who needs, a uh, baby needs it. It's not a coincidence for you to bring extra grocery or whatever you know is needed. Is not a coincidence. Because you know what? God places that in you. And when he speaks, I think our problem is that we don't listen carefully. Okay? Because there are so many needs. And we women have so much to do and so much great parts to play that we, we are sitting on borrowed time and do not, do not take time to see what we can do for the master. Now, we are not created to do life on our own. Psalms 107 verse 9 reminds us for, He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. There are no coincidence with God. There are so many outside elements that you have no control over in your life. Starting with your birth, ending with your death, and including everything that transpires in between those two events. The reason I want to bring up this issue today is to give you the confidence and assurance that everything that is happening to you, it is the part of the divine plan of life. If you want to understand clearly today that it is no accident, you can live where you want to, you can work where you want to, go to school where you want to, 
You see, my friends, there are no coincidence with God. Things just don't happen. There is a divine purpose and reason for each and everything that goes on in our lives. The natural question becomes, why? Why am I, in many cases, there simply isn't no answer. Again, holding on to the fact that there are no coincidences with God help us to build our faith during those times when we are more question, have more questions than answers. It also should give us the confidence and boldness to go out each day, as I said earlier on. It's not a coincidence to go visiting. And when you go visiting, it's not a coincidence for you to ask, where is your mop, where is your broom, where is this, where is that? Because you know what? That's our duty. God has a reason for everything we are expecting in our life. Understanding that we are going through each day, what we are going through each day, is not an accident, but part of his plan gives us the incredible freedom to live each day for him. I realize that many of us are going through difficult times in our life. We are dealing with death, illnesses, financial difficulties, marital problems, issues with our parents or children, challenges at work, school, and even the walls start caving in around us. How this could be part of God's plan may seem beyond comprehension. This was the same plan, place a man called Job found himself. In spite of everything, he never lost his faith in God. Then, why should we? We are modern Job. As long as we do not become modern, Madam Salt, what was his, Job's wife? As long as we don't look back and regret and murmur about anything that we do to help our brothers and sisters. We never know how God will deliver us from trouble, how he will bless us. Our jobs is to hold on to our faith, continue to praise him, in spite of the problems we face, and know he will never leave us or forsake us. The Bible tells us that there will be times our faith will be tested. We grow spiritually when we are in the valley or on the mountaintop. And it's the valley that we recognize God as our only source of hope and learn how to trust him. It is those times in the valley where it is just us and God that we realize how much we need him and he loves us. Now, know today that God is with us, that nothing in our lives is an accident and that God is in control. It's no coincidence that the Lord has brought our lives together at this time in our life. I want to know want you to know that I am here for you in your time of need. I will be praying for you. God is still on his throne and in a hundred percent control of all times. There are no coincidence. Life is the greatest gift God has given us, but it already goes the exact way we planned. Disappointments litter our paths, failures test our faith, and sorrows scare our hearts. But we, each hardship, with each hardship, God reminds us we were not made to tackle life alone. He is there providing strength 
for our weakness? Coincident? I don't think so. God has created us as individuals who long for relationships with others and with him, more importantly. He has created our hearts to love, our lives to be shared, and he tells us in the scripture that he will fill our hungry souls with goodness. It's not a coincidence, ladies. When nominating time comes around for offices, when you're asked, again, I'm going to repeat it, when you're asked to be an assistant, when you're asked to help into a department, not only for ladies, but this is Women's Ministry Day, and I'm encouraging my sisters that there's no coincidence. Just fill the blanks or fill in the space, and you will see what God has in store for you. Because... There are times when we do not know what is out there waiting for us. There is a heart out there waiting to be blessed. There is, um, or there are ears that are waiting to hear from you. Eyes that are waiting to see someone. And hands waiting to reach out and touch someone. Our lives would have been very, very much different if we would heed to what the Lord is asking from us. So therefore, when we leave here today, I'm praying that the ladies of Westmount Church will start reaching out in whatever capacity there will be or there is because it's not a coincidence to get involved. It will be betterment for you. And if we only take God as, it, as his word and his promise, there wouldn't be any coincidence in your life because everything is already ordered, ordained, and planned by him. So we should not fear to go out, be involved, and let God do the rest. He has blessing in stores for you and for me. So I am not a long speaker, so I'm just going to end this little speech here by saying something that may sound funny. But if you look at it the way I see it, the way I've lived it, there ain't no fun in this. And it ain't no coincidence that I'm gonna read this to you. So upon my closing, I'm gonna say, when I was young and restless, I was very worried about the days of my life. I was bold and very beautiful, still are, <laughs> and was searching for tomorrow. And as the world turned for me, there was the general hospital. I didn't end up in there anyhow. Then God says to me, you are all my children. I'll be your guiding light. And I am saying this morning to the ladies of the church, I may not be able to take you to the world beyond where Mr. Sparks had went. Okay. But one thing I know for sure, that I could take you to the king. May God bless you this afternoon, and may this make a difference in your life today.